China sets out deep space exploration plans. China on Tuesday published a white paper outlining the country's activities in space for the next half decade. The Chinese government plans to launch and land probes on Mars and the Moon by 2020. The lunar mission is set for 2018, and if successful, would see the first ever probe being landed on the far side of the Moon. China also plans on robotically exploring the Moon's poles. China's Mars mission is slated for 2020. China plans to send a lander, rover, and orbiter to Mars all in one go. There, China aims to collect samples from the planet and transport them to Earth by 2030. China also aims to explore an asteroid and the Jupiter system, with the latter mission expected to take place in the next 10 to 15 years. If any of these are successful, they have the potential to set the People's Republic of China on the path to becoming a space power that could rival Russia or even the U.S. Here's five more stories about China. China militarizes seven islands in the disputed South China Sea. Despite Chinese President Xi Jinping previously stating that China did not intend to pursue militarization in the South China Sea, satellite images released by a U.S. think tank reveal the contrary. China appears to have militarized its seven artificial islands in the South China Sea. At Gavin Reef, a central structure is surrounded by four extended arms. Two of the arms likely host anti-aircraft guns, while the other two may hold close-in weapon systems. Hughes Reef has point defense structures similar to those at Gavin Reef. The structure of the facility at Johnson Reef has been modified. The central facility has two arms, with one holding an anti-aircraft gun and the other holding a close-in weapon system. Another gun and close-in weapon system and a radar were seen on a separate structure on the island. The central facility at Quateron Reef is completely separate from the point defense systems. Experts believe the northeastern and southwestern ends of the island each host structures with anti-aircraft guns, close-in weapon systems, and radar. At Fiery Cross Reef, four structures are positioned toward the sea. This allows the anti-aircraft guns and close-in weapon systems to cover any kind of approach to the base. Similar designs are being observed at Mischief Reef, where two of four structures have been completed. At Subi Reef, only one of four structures have been completed. The installations would likely support a future deployment of mobile surface-to-air missile platforms, similar to the HQ-9 system deployed to Woody Island in the Parasol Islands. The director of the Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative says China's actions are definitely militarization. He added that the Chinese can argue the structures are for defensive purposes, but such weaponry indicates they are preparing for a future conflict. China tests railroad car launch of DF-41 missile. According to United States intelligence agency's monitors, China has tested a rail car launch of a long-range missile that can reach the U.S. Defense officials announced China's military testing canister ejection of a DF-41 missile on December 5th. Estimates by U.S. intelligence agencies say that the DF-41 will carry up to 10 MIRVs when it's deployed. According to Philip A. Carber, a defense expert who heads the Potomac Foundation, China has tunnel complexes that can hold three missile trains side by side. Carber added that launch cars can be disguised as civilian passenger trains, travel on high-speed trains, and are hard to regulate or verify because of tunnel protection and secure reloading of multiple warheads. The DF-41 reportedly has a range of 7,500 miles, or over 12,000 kilometers. Rick Fisher, an expert on the Chinese military program, told the Washington Free Beacon, this vastly increases the challenge of tracking China's ICBM force. As China today has 74,565 miles of rail lines, including 9,942 miles of high-speed rail. Chinese officials have confirmed construction of China's second aircraft carrier. The Chinese government's official newspaper, The People's Daily, has confirmed the construction of China's second aircraft carrier. China's Liaoning, a former Soviet aircraft carrier from Ukraine and China's first carrier, uses an outdated ski jump ramp in order to launch aircraft. The country's second aircraft carrier will include a ski jump ramp, as well as two electromagnetic catapults to launch airplanes. 
The new 315-meter-long aircraft carrier will be slightly larger than Liaoning. Liaoning is able to carry up to 50 aircraft, while the new carrier will be able to carry up to 70, including J-15 fighters, anti-submarine helicopters, and early warning helicopters. The new aircraft carrier may include four surface-to-air missiles, a closed-in weapons system, and three anti-submarine rocket launchers. China's defense spending rose 12% in 2014, and it's no secret that China's People's Liberation Army Navy seeks a blue water naval fleet that includes four aircraft carriers. China to launch new space lab this year. China plans to launch its second space laboratory into outer space this year, which is part of its strategy to create a manned space station that is expected to be in service around 2022. China's second space laboratory, Tiangong-2, will be attached to two separate labs. Two astronauts will be sent to the space station by Shenzhou-11 spacecraft. Their mission is expected to last for 30 days, doubling the longest period Chinese astronauts have previously spent in space. China will launch the country's first cargo spaceship, Tianzhou-1, which aims to supply propellants for Tiangong-2 and food and drinks for the astronaut. Apart from conducting science experiments, the main mission for the space station is to practice key technologies such as on-orbit propellant resupply, which is essential in order to ensure the permanent operation of the space station. China's first space laboratory, Tiangong-1, was launched in 2011 and has been in good working condition ever since. China conducts flight test of hypersonic glide vehicle. With Beijing continuing to test new weapons that could be deployed in a matter of years, pressure is growing within the U.S. to develop countermeasures. China successfully conducted a flight test this week for its new DFZF hypersonic glide vehicle, launching it atop a ballistic missile from Ujai in northern China. The vehicle, which could carry a nuclear payload, was carried to the edge of space where it separated from its launcher. Current U.S. defenses rely on satellite and ground radar to track and intercept missiles that travel along a predictable flight path. But the DFZF, which reportedly travels at speeds between Mach 5 and 10, or 3,836 to 7,680 miles per hour, may be able to defeat current defenses due to its maneuverability and high speed. From Shanxi province, the hypersonic vehicle glided to an impact range several thousand miles away in western China. This latest launch is the sixth time China has conducted a flight test of the DFZF in the past year. See a story that really should be animated? Suggest stories to Tomo News Now!